So a great question is how do you find a good stock? Which is easier to answer than you might think. I'm going to tweak that question just a little bit though. We're going to talk about, well, how do we find great stocks? So what classifies a company as a great stock, I mean, it's going to vary from one investor to the other, but let's look at an example of the way that some investors might define a great stock. So this is 2020. The stock is Tesla. And if I grab a price gauge here, we just run it from a low to a high over, uh, let's see, early 2021 or so. And from early uh, 2020, looks like it returned about 1,000, 1,100%. I mean, that's by any definition, that is a great stock. The question is with companies like this, or, or here's another one, uh, the, the GameStop during 2021 went on two runaway breakout trends that were just absolutely berserk. Uh, the first one in January of 2021 uh, moved about 2,500%. So the question is with both the GameStop as well as the Tesla, clearly those are great returns. Uh, so therefore, are they a great stock? Well, they might be, they might be, certainly they're great returns and, and they might be good stocks, but the nature here of these kinds of breakouts is that we would not have known in advance that that was likely. Uh, there's some investors with the value of hindsight, maybe they look like geniuses, but that is a very difficult performance to ever replicate on purpose. Now, however, if we look at other really exceptional returns, so here's another example. This is a TPR tapestry. If you're unfamiliar with the company, they own luxury brands like um, Coach and Kate Spade. And here, so I'm going from a, uh, a bottom to a top over about the last 12 months here, at least as, uh, as I've recorded. And their return was uh, almost 200%. Pretty good. And it, it, in fact, very, very good. So are there characteristics here with stocks that deliver this kind of, of extraordinary returns are there some common characteristics that maybe would have been impossible for us to identify with a company like Tesla or GameStop, but become more possible with a company like Tapestry? I'm going to argue in this video that the answer is yes, and that you can easily screen for these kinds of companies. So as we dig into that idea, though, let's, let's do a little bit of defining our terms here. These characteristics, what I'm referring to is fundamentals. So fundamental value or financial performance. And there's a lot of ways for us to measure that. We could think about sales, uh, how, how much products XYZ company is selling, uh, profits, well, how much money are they actually making, cash flow, which can be different than profits depending on the industry that you're in. Are, are, are these the fundamental characteristics we should spend our time worrying about? Yes, sometimes, a little bit, certainly. Uh, or, or valuation ratios. So like the PE ratio, if you've heard of it, which I imagine most of you probably have. Well, the P.E. ratio is the current price of the stock divided by its earnings per share or profits per share. So total profits divided by total number of shares outstanding. Well, ideally, is a low P.E. ratio, does that indicate low or under, an undervalued stock? So therefore, I should buy that. Is that a good stock? Is a high P.E. ratio, is that is that good or does that mean that it's overvalued? Or, or how about uh, tweaks to that idea like the P.E.G. or the PEG ratio? which integrates the expected growth rate of the stock in with the P.E. ratio. In fact, that's an interesting one. Peter Lynch uh, ran the, this massive, unbelievably large Magellan fund as a mutual fund for Fidelity in the 70s and the 80s. And for a long time, actually, consistently outperformed the S&P 500. And he popularized the idea of using the PEG ratio or P.E.G. ratio in his book, One Up on Wall Street, which is still actually worth a read. I, I recommend it. Well, the problem is, however, with that kind of fundamental data, is that anytime we look at value in a, with a given snapshot in time, so as of today, we have to assume that everybody else has access to that same information and therefore it is already reflected in the stock's price. So are there other things that might tip us off that those numbers are likely to get better in the future and therefore the stock, when those numbers actually materialize in the future, the stock is likely to rise in price. That would be a real objective for us to look for. And fortunately, the data has given us a pretty good guide for how to find that. So let's go back. Let's take a look at, at Tapestry again. So this is an interesting company. The snapshot that I'm showing you here, I kind of cherry picked the time frame just a little bit because they had been performing recently or prior to this, not as great. Uh, it, what might have tipped off an investor, however, that their performance was likely to improve in the future. 
Well, trend. So if you ever heard the expression, the trend is your friend, it counts as much for fundamental analysts as much as it does for technical analysts. Trends in the market tend to be persistent. So what the data shows is that companies that have recently seen a, an improving rate of change in their fundamentals, meaning that profits are whatever they are today, even if they're losses, they are better than they were over a prior period and over a period prior to that. So the trend of change is positive. That seems to be the most compelling uh, characteristic that would help us to identify a company that is likely to perform like a tapestry than any other. So how would we look for this? Well, it can be a little tricky because, uh, for example, here I'm on Tapestry's uh, investor relations page where we can go in and we can dig around in their uh, financial reports. In fact, I've conveniently uh, brought one up here. So this is their uh, consolidated statement of cash flows. You can see up at the top, uh, looks like on a the quarter last year, which would have been March, the end of the quarter, which would have been March 28th, 2020 versus March 27th, 2021 this year, as I record this, well, their, their net income improved quite a bit. So that looks actually really good. And we can scroll down the list here a little bit. If I go down a bit further, the net cash op provided by operating activities, it's not quite the same thing as free cash flow, but it's still uh, a good thing that has been uh, imp improving quite a bit. So th that's the kind of thing that we would look for. But as I said, there's a problem with this in that although the data is there, I can see this positive rate of change that had existed e even prior to this. So, so the, this positive rate of change had existed even, even before the most recent quarterly report. In either case, I got to pull quarterly reports and scan through these. I have to have some level of expertise to be able to read and understand them. And then I have to go through how many investor relations pages to find that information, that rate of change. Well, there is actually a way for us to do this automatically. Uh, a lot of professional investors can use uh, uh, commercial grade, industrial grade uh, screening applications like a Bloomberg terminal or Reuters terminal or something like that. Uh, there aren't a lot of uh, tools available for retail investors, but you can do it at learning markets. So I'll, I'll show you an example here uh, on, on my screen. So I'm gonna go to learning markets. If you go here, on the menu on the left, there's a screener. So I'm going to click the screener tab, which I actually already have up and ready to go. Now I'm going to show you this from the perspective of a more advanced investor who kind of knows what they're looking for. So I'll give you some ideas here to start with, but you can actually go in and just run this search, uh, the pre-built and, and you see the same results that I did, or you can tweak it if you want. The But when we're talking about trend, what the data says is that there are a few fundamental characteristics that have the most predictive power for uh, delivering positive returns in the future. And it includes things like revenue or sales, trend of growth, not the absolute number today, but rather how has it been changing most recently, particularly over the last 12 months. So revenue or sales, uh, certainly per share, earnings per share, so profits per share, cash flow per share, uh, things like uh, the cash conversion ratio, which is uh, a subject for another video. Those have a lot of predictive value. The trend of change, the positive trend of change has a lot of predictive value for how that stock is likely to perform in the future. And if we take advantage of diversification, well, we can increase our confidence level that we're picking a good portfolio. So I put in a few criteria here. I've, I've suggested, okay, earnings per share growth positive 2020, which was the most recent full year and the trailing 12 months, which at this point is nearly a full year. Uh, free cash flow, same thing. And I've put in a couple more tweaks. I've tried to keep it kind of simple. Uh, I always get the question, how do I find stocks that aren't priced at $1,000 a share so I can uh, buy a few hundred shares and maybe sell covered calls on them or something like that. So I've put in a price constraint here that I only want stocks priced between $10 and $20. So if I apply this, I'm going to get a list of stocks that I can start to filter through rather than having to go to every one of their investor relations pages, pull their quarterly reports, scan down until I find the statement of cash flows or the income statement and uh, filter from there, which would take me an unreasonable amount of time if I don't have a staff. But here I can start to look for, and there's some interesting ones already popping out at me as I look at this. I'm not surprised to see a lot of real estate companies since 2021 has been very good for real estate, late 2020. So that would explain the, the positive rate of change for a few of those companies. A couple of banking firms, that's interesting. Telecommunications, that also is interesting to me. So there, there's a lot to be able to filter through here where we're, what we're doing is we're looking for good stocks, not based on necessarily what they're doing today as in, in absolute dollar terms or performance terms, 
but instead thinking about, well, in the past, companies that have done the best are not even necessarily profitable. They're just becoming more positive over time. They're trending in a more positive direction, whether that is that they are becoming more profitable or they're just becoming less unprofitable. The performance actually winds up looking very similar. And this is the way that we would go about finding companies like that, finding good companies to add to a portfolio. <laughs> 